Hello, and welcome to another episode of Ying Cooks the Internet. It's been a little while, but I'm still here cooking the internet. Today I'm gonna to be making a ratatouille tart tatin. What is a ratatouille tart tatin? You may be asking. I'm also asking the same question. I'm pretty sure my dear friend, Mr. Dave Chang, was just playing word association and trying to come up with an SEO friendly dish when he shouted out ratatouille tartatan. If you watched our episode of Make It Happen where Dave and I made a chicken pot pie in 45 minutes. And I thought to myself, why don't I make a tartatan? Why? I don't know. We didn't make it, which is why Chris Ying is going to make it. Maybe it's going to be a ratatouille tartatan or tartatan, I don't know. On TikTok and Instagram, a lot of Influencers playing around with puff pastry, baking things on sheet trays, and then flipping them over to make some version of a tart tatin, which is classically a pastry that you make in a pan full of sugar and caramelized apples that you put a dough on top of, you bake it, and then you flip it over and you have this magnificent, beautiful pastry of gooey, deeply browned apples and a, a nice pastry shell. So Dave's idea was to do this with ratatouille. You've seen Ratatouille, the movie. You've seen Remy the Rat make his pièce de résistance, his, his big shining moment when he's feeding Anton Ego. It's actually based on a dish called a Bialdi. Lots of layers of vegetables shingled around in concentric circles, cooked in a tomato sauce. All the flavors of ratatouille, but in this beautiful form. Binging with Babish's first ever episode, famously recreated the Bialdi. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish. This week, I'm going to be recreating the top voted suggestion, which was ratatouille. I'm gonna make this ratatouille tart tatin. Full disclosure, this is the third time I've done it. I did it the day after Dave said I would, that I promised Dave I would make it. I sent him a photo of it. I made this ratatouille tart tatin and sent it to Dave. It looks like this. You can probably, we can probably show this in a more smart way. But I went through all the trouble of shingling these layers and then I just put tomatoes on top of it just to hide these beautiful layers. Dave's advice was to get some more browning on the vegetables which I tried to do a second time, but I made another mistake of putting parchment down, which stopped the, the layer of the vegetables from getting nice and brown like I wanted them to. Anyway, I'm determined to succeed today on attempt number three of the ratatouille tart tatin. I'm gonna show you how to do it. I got started a little bit. We have um, just some, this is like one and a half onions sliced and just sort of melting into a, uh, a GBG, a golden brown goo, uh, in this nonstick skillet. I don't, I'm, I'm just trying to do it. It's, it's gonna take a long time to, to caramelize onions. For a long time, this was like, my biggest pet peeve was reading recipes that said, caramelize the onions for three to four minutes. When everybody knows it takes between 40 minutes and the rest of your life to actually brown onions. The next thing I wanna get started on, I'm basically gonna slice all of these vegetables into thin coins so that I can lay them out in these beautiful layers across this, this pan here. A nice, <laughs> slender, lengthy Chinese or Japanese eggplant would be easier to work with because it's already naturally in this <laughs> cylindrical shape. I'm gonna do what I can with this, but the first thing I wanna do is slice this and then salt it so we can get some of the moisture out. We're not gonna get beautiful circles out of this, unfortunately. Let's go an eighth of an inch. But I'm going to lay these all out. I'm gonna salt them to get some of the liquid to come out of them because water and liquid generally is the enemy of browning. It's not always 100% true, but. And the other, the other tough thing here about not having a long Chinese eggplant is that you can see these are all gonna be very different 
in girth and shape. The thing that I really would like is for everything to be the same thickness so that when I layer them, they can all sort of look the same. So I might cheat it a little bit, save those eggplants for something else. This is a nice eggplant, by the way. Nice job, Ira. Ira did the shopping today. And you've managed to find me a nice, thick eggplant without too many seeds. The one thing that I forgot to ask for is a little bit of basil. So I'm gonna have to text the guys over at Bianco next door to see if we can get a little basil. Hopefully they'll hook us up with some basil. This is, as you can see, most of one eggplant's worth of eggplant slices. Uh, I'm gonna salt all this eggplant. Decent amount of salt. And just let that hang out. <clears throat> Hopefully pull some of the water out and then we'll drain it with some paper towels. I'm waiting to add garlic and thyme to these onions. I want the onions to get nice and deep, dark, golden brown. I don't want my garlic to get burnt. I don't want the thyme to be burnt, so I will wait to add that still for another five, 10 minutes. In the meantime, I will slice these vegetables. It's my least favorite tool in the kitchen, the mandolin, because it is famously a devourer of fingertips and knuckles. So you should really use the guard when you're doing this, or if you don't want to use the guard, the guard is like a piece of plastic that you put on here so you don't, you never, your fingers are never exposed to this blade. Um, if you don't want to use the guard, you can do use my method of safety, which is to chicken out when you get about this far <laughs> from reaching the blade and don't go any closer than, like right now, look at this. There's like my fingers are two and a half inches from touching the blade and I'm just about to chicken out. I'm about to, I'm about to chicken out and not, go any closer to this. Like that's, honestly, that's about as close as I wanna get. And I'll move this over to the nub pile. This is gonna go into our <clears throat> nub storage. That's where the nubs go. And I will move over to, am I forgetting a vegetable? What else goes in this? Does this need peppers? Does this need bell peppers? Does ratatouille have bell pepper in it? Shit. Ratatouille has bell pepper. Hmm. What should I do with this bell pepper issue? Should I go see if I have any bell peppers in the other kitchen? Um, well, look at that. Here's this random tray of things, including this already half sliced bell pepper. Um, oh yeah, welcome to the set of Dinner Time Live. Just our neighbors over here in K1. Here he is. I know that some people saw those two Fresno chilies in the fridge and wanted me to throw them in here too. Hold on. So it's gonna be a tiny bit spicy then, right? I'm not a huge bell pepper fan, but I do like a little bit of that background flavor of bell peppers. So we'll throw a Fresno chili in there too. This will go into the nub pile. The nub pile is gonna become some kind of dinner for my family, I think. So this is gonna be, the peppers and the onions are gonna be a layer, I hate to, just, I hate to use this term, but like, we're kind of deconstructing a, a Bialdi here, but that's gonna go on to, it's gonna be these shingled vegetables, then a layer of tomato, then a layer of this onion and pepper situation, then puff pastry, store-bought puff pastry. That's, the, that's, what's, that's where we're headed with all of this stuff. There's another tool that Dave talks about all the time called this is not like, this is this to me is the scariest home utility, but there is a commercial, commercial kitchen tool called the Buffalo Chopper. Use caution as the cutting blades are now exposed. 
Unscrew the knife shaft knob using extreme caution not to touch the edge of the blade. Which is basically just like, it's something a Bond villain would create and threaten to kill Mr. Bond in. It's just instant death, instant mangling. I'm gonna see if that's enough to get us through this. We'll slice more if we have to. I'm gonna turn my attention back to these peppers and onions in just a minute. All right, we're back. Um, you can see, I don't know, can you catch this, Ira? All this eggplant has been in the sauna. Eggplant perspiration. I'm gonna pat that down with a paper towel. Get some of that liquid off of there. Wonder what's happening over at Pane Bianco. Wonder if they'll give me my basil. I don't want this to, I want this to go slow. I want it to really Maillard and not caramelize. Now, it's, there's nothing wrong with caramelization, but if you, if you know, like if you just put a bunch of onions into like a ripping hot pan, they'll get like brown, but really that is just, um, that's not the same as these sugars being slowly converted like enzymatically into the brownness and like the sweet brown savory stuff. That's, that's my art. There's a difference basically you're like burning them a little bit to do it quickly as opposed to sort of slowly browning. Browning and burning are different things. Got our eggplant sort of dry. We'll throw this garlic into our mixture over here, along with, we'll pick some a little thyme. This is kind of a lazy way of doing this, but like, there's a difference between sort of picking thyme, which is you are picking the leaves off of this meticulously, so as you get no stem in this. I saw Dave doing this for the for Dinner Time Live. He was picking thyme like a crazy person. And then there is sort of stripping thyme, which is nine o'clock at my house. Oh my God. Stripping thyme, you're just sort of pulling against the grain and dumping it in there. If I'm making a stew or a soup or a braise, I will just throw this whole stem in there so that I, and then pluck it out at the end. The reason why I'm not just tossing the whole thing in right now is, in my opinion, at least, this, like throwing the whole sprig in there works better when there is a liquidy medium to receive your uh, time. So like all the flavor of the stems and leaves can sort of permeate through the liquid. This is not, there's not, I mean, there's tons of oil. It probably would work to do it this way, but I don't mind all of that time showing up in the final product either. That smells awesome. I also probably should have done one extra, I should have done two full onions because I'm thinking about whether this is going to cover, it's gonna be a thin layer covering this whole thing. Onions always just end up reducing down to less than you think that they will. Here's the other decision point. So I'm gonna oil this little sheet pan down that happens to be a perfect size for us. I want to throw some sugar on there. Just because, like I said, a, a real tartatin, when you make it with apple or whatever, pear, quince, whatever you're gonna make a tartatin with, you have this caramelized bottom. And I don't know if it's a good idea, but I'm gonna do it. Fortune favors the bold, you know? A little salt. And now we begin the layering process. Like this, like this, like this, like this. God, these eggplants are really screwing up my whole look here, huh? I just, I'm not, I'm not super happy that I'm ending up with these little triangles. I've been trying to convince people for years that the long slender Chinese eggplant is superior. Uh, our friends at Pizzeria Bianco just dropped off this bouquet of basil for us. God, it pays to have incredibly generous, kind, and well-stocked neighbors. Uh, man, I can't tell you how many times we have had to borrow little things for them, generally of the tomato and basil 
family. I don't know why these nubs are up here, but you can go down there now. Uh, we're back. Um, just to catch you up, we're making a ratatouille tart tatin. Again, this was Dave Chang just throwing some words out there and inventing somebody something. Uh, I've layered all these vegetables. It took me 300 years to do this, and now they are here. Uh, you can do this, like I said, if you have, the key to getting this, doing this well is to have vegetables that are all the same size, which I didn't. Um, but, you know, take your time with it. Take some pride in making this look beautiful. Now I'm going to do a few things here. I'm gonna season these, I'm gonna season them here with some savory salt. And then I think, it's the third time I've done this, and I'm gonna change it up a little. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get the, I'm gonna put, give these a head start in the oven. I'm gonna broil these just while I slice these tomatoes. Let's see if I can get these a little bit of a head start on the browning. The nightmare scenario is that I forget about that and I burn these in the next three minutes, but hopefully that won't happen. Hopefully it'll go quickly. And this is gonna be like a little layer to make up for. Usually you have tomato sauce as the kind of backbone of the ratatouille. But since we don't have that, we're gonna do just nice little slices of tomato. Here's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna spread these all out. And I'm gonna give them a little pre seasoning, a little salt, a little sugar, and a little MSG. We'll let those hang out. All right, let's see what our vegetables are doing. They are doing nothing. All right, now we are truly living on the precipice of burning things, because that's right under this fire. Puff pastry will be the last thing we do. Egg mixture, all right. So we'll do a little egg wash too. Just cleaning my situation, because these things have a tendency to spiral. You like don't clean up your, you don't clean as you go, your, your whole area starts to look like a disaster. You start sort of cooking like a disaster. I'm gonna make a little egg wash while we're waiting. Um, it's just gonna be an egg. A little bit of milk. All right. That's our egg wash. I want one long piece of pastry to go over the top. I got two pieces here. I'm basically just gonna combine these into, that's probably long enough right there. So I'll use a tiny bit of water just to sort of connect these guys. Uh, how long is this thing here? What do you think? That's long enough? I just want it to be so long that it's not manageable. Keep this in the nub pile. We'll let that sit there for a second. Now let's, uh, ready or not, here we come. You know what, in the interest of deliciousness, I was trying to get Ira and myself out of here faster, but in the interest of deliciousness, I'm gonna let that sit and we're gonna take another quick break because I want those to come out a little bit browner. Okay. And, Another reason why I think it was smart to give this a little head start with the broiler is you can see all this steam rising up right now. It's just giving me like a ratatouille facial. Um, that is all, that was all just gonna end up in our, our final product here. I wanna drain off, in fact, I'm gonna drain off some of this liquid. I just don't want all this liquid. I want to get as much rid of as much liquid as I can, which I think I successfully did. 
Okay, so up next, we are gonna do tomatoes. Nothing looks bad about this right now, huh? Like, I'm not mad at this at all. I think that looks pretty good. And now we've got our little onion and pepper schmoo to go on top. The onions are not gonna break down much more than they have. What I do want to happen is I want these tomatoes to give up their juices and break down a little bit with the salt and the heat. But I don't want like a wet, soppy mess. So I'm hoping that since we like got rid of a bunch of liquid from the squash and the eggplants and the zucchini, that it's not gonna be this wet diaper at the bottom. I don't want the puff pastry to have to be a diaper. Parmigiano Reggiano. Just because I saw it in the fridge. Wow, I thought this was gonna be way too long, but I think it might be exactly the right length. I'm gonna trim. Here we go. Into the oven, 400 degrees. Let's call it 20 minutes, right? 20 minutes. Okay. Let's have a look, shall we? I mean, there have been worse looking things in the world, right? This is hot out of the oven. I'm gonna give it. I'm just gonna try to loosen the edges a little. I'll give this a little while to cool before we try to flip it over. But it's promising. Let's give this 10 minutes and then we'll flip it over and we'll give it a taste. All right, so it's been eight minutes since I pulled this out of the oven. Really, I should just let this hang out for an hour, but I gotta take my daughter to gymnastics soon, so I have to leave. So I'm gonna try to flip this over. I loosened all the edges. It looks like it's gonna, it's mobile. It's gonna be a real bummer if this doesn't work out. I also forgot to put basil in there, so I'm gonna sprinkle a chiffonade of that on top. You ready for this? Mm -hmm. uh, let's go. That thud is like not that encouraging, but. Ooh. Nobody's mad at that, right? Let's do a little chiffonade of basil on top. Maybe it does look better with the tomato on top. I can't really tell. Do a little basil. Come on. That looks pretty good. That yeah, little yeah. store-bought puff pastry is pretty good. Got some lamination. Okay. Mm. You know the text message I always get from my friends after we post these videos? Every single time I post something, and put a YouTube video up or something, they say, was that really good? Or were you just saying it was good? I'll never lie to you. It's really, really tasty. And I feel weirdly healthy eating it. It's tasty. <laughs> There's definitely like, I can definitely, we definitely added a Fresno chili. It's not entirely mild. Man, I'm just gobbling this up. So, to review, a ratatouille or bialdi tartatan, a combination of words that Dave Chang just spoke into existence. I don't know if other people have made this before. I did a little Googling. I didn't see a lot of these on the internet or any. The internet had been playing with puff pastry. Dave Chang caught wind. He blurted out tartatan, ratatouille tartatan. Everybody loves a bialdi. 
This is an ode to the internet. This is a dish born entirely of the internet. I'm really happy with it. This is the third time I've made this thing. It's kind of labor intensive, all in two and a half hours, three hours maybe of work. But I love this thing. It's really delicious. Thank you so much for watching yet another episode of Ying Cooks the Internet. Uh, we are going to get back to making these on the regular. I love doing this and I love eating vegetables <laughs> so much. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you all real soon.